Now here's Lady Sunshine, Gwen Squire. See in action. Today our special guests are Destiny and John Constantine. How are you doing? Good. 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 How are you? I'm good. Thank you. And my characters. Hi, Lady Sunshine. How are you? I'm good. Thanks. How are you? Good. <laughs> good. Um, let's start out with my favorite question. I just love to ask people to tell them about, tell me about themselves. So let's start with you, Destiny. Whatever you want to tell us. Um, I'm originally from Buffalo. Um, we grew up there. We just moved to Lockport about five years ago. Um, I am born with a bone disease called Blount. It's a rare bone disease that affects the growth of my left leg and also affects my, um, my uh, now it affects my foot and my hip. Okay. Um, I'm currently, um, well, since I had to take an extra semester my third year at NCCC, okay. I'm studying to be an elementary teacher. Cool. Um, it's been my dream since I was four years old. All right. Awesome. Um, just element, just regular elementary or special ed? Um, or? At right now I'm doing elementary, um, but when I transfer next year, I want to go into special education. Awesome. And John, how about you? Well, since I'm the old guy at a group here, <laughs> I was born born in Buffalo, raised by my grandma out in the country. Um, come back to Buffalo because my mom got remarried and um, grew up on uh, in Black Rock, Riverside area. Um, moved to Lockport about five or six years ago, like Destiny said. Um, a recent graduate of Riverside High School in 1992. Um, out of summer school. I'm proud of that moment because I didn't give up. Um, the strangest thing is, I, in third grade, I found out I had a learning disability. Mm. Whereas, like, I would read, uh, like, a plain piece of paper, mm -hmm. never understand it until somebody read it to me, no. which is kind of crazy. Yeah. And then I'm a, also a recent graduate of uh, the Education Opportunity Center, downtown Buffalo. Okay. Um, the craziest thing is, a guy with a disability walks across the stage three times mm -hmm. with a 4.0 plus grade average. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Very nice. Because um, nice. computers. I think I think I found my way through computers, mm -hmm. and but I still have a hard time understanding stuff. I don't think I'll never ever get rid of it, mm -hmm. but I've seemed to have a medium for it. And now with the push from her, I'm a NCCC student as well. Awesome. And we actually go to school together. Oh, I encourage you to come back to school. <laughs> Very nice. How's that for you guys to go to school together though? Um, it's nice, um, just in case of emergency, it's nice to know that my dad's just down the hall or in the next building over. Um, but so you don't, you don't allow him to hang out with you and your friends? No, he hangs out with us, he knows okay. all my friends. Okay. I'm like dad at a group, you know, they all come hang out, you know, we sit and talk, you know. Okay. I give him like dad advice sometimes, you know. Awesome. So, so... Like what? What area of education? I, I believe you said special ed, right? In elementary. Yes. In elementary. Why? That's what I wanted to know. That was my question. Why special ed? What? What made you want to do that? Um. Even though I don't have a learning disability, um. Even though my dad does, my best friend is like my sister does, um. See when I'm in the classroom, seeing her not understand, and when I do my field placement, seeing some of the kids, you know, really need the attention right away. Mm -hmm. um, even though I have a physical disability, but it doesn't matter what kind you have. I right. think the kids and everybody needs that, you know, undivided attention. And I think having more special ed teachers, or at least you know, with that experience, mm -hmm. it can help more of the kids nowadays. Yeah, I kind of very agree with nice, that. Very nice, very nice. So, um, you said you had how much longer to go for school, for schooling? Um, I'm good to, st I only have two classes left at NCCC, but I'm good to stay an extra semester. Okay. Um, to get an early childhood certificate so it can span onto my degree. Oh, awesome. Um, but then I'm going to transfer to Damon next year. I'm going to be there for a little bit. I, I, re I really want my master's. Go, girl. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> and if I that. can, I will get my PhD. Ooh. Ah. But I'm going to try for master's first. Awesome. I haven't even had the guts to get my PhD yet. I've got the master's. 
I haven't had the guts to go on for my PhD though yet. So. We, well, another thing we want to know about is your book because you guys are authors and I think that's so cool. Mm -hmm. So how did that happen? What's that all about? And explain to us about the book. Well, this book is a creation of my dad and I. Okay. Uh, this book first started with my dad. He was in the writing center at school. He was writing a pa uh, essay for his writing class, and it ended up being a bonus paper. And he just started writing. Um, there's a road by our house called Honor Road mm -hmm. in the town of Lockport. Um, that is kind of, um, kind of dark nighttime. It's a little, uh, spooky because sometimes. of the forest. Okay. All the trees, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of inspiration of a little bit of the road. Okay. But this all started with my dad. Now, now don't tell us mm -hmm. everything about the book because we want people to buy it and read it. <laughs> that, that's the point where we want people to buy the thing. Um. This, this all started after I, I got done healing from knee surgery because she was walking before she was in the power chair. Okay. And she fell in the house and I got really scared. And then we got the <laughs> manual wheelchair. Plus we were bowling at Brad Angelo's and I tore my knee up. I had to get arthroscopic surgery. So we're, this girl was so motivated no matter if she was walking, not walking or in a power chair. And when we got this power chair and I was feeling good, she was like, dad, I'm not sitting home no more. We're going to school. I'm I, like, had, okay. I had to take a little semester so, off. And going back to school, so mad. <laughs> I just always had something in my mind, like like like, are you ready for an adventure? And then mm -hmm. we get down this road, and we, I keep saying like, set out like two long wolves. That's like my favorite part of the movie, mm -hmm. and that, I think that grabs everybody's attention. And they go to page to page to find out what's going to happen, but in the part is where we get lost. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, are we going to make it home? And it was it was it was interesting, but mm -hmm. the, I'm, I'm I'm amazed at myself. Even having a learning disability, to come out and write a, a bonus paper and it get turned into a book. Yeah, I'm like okay, now now that I'm going to be 42 in September. It's like the sky's the limit now because yeah. before I was doing customer service work, wasn't happy. Mm -hmm. I started had that self doubt, like like what if I can do something else? Mm -hmm. And this is just something else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, I think from the way I grew up, mm -hmm. and I really don't talk about this, but having a learning disability, I was actually bullied in high school. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, no, this can't happen to me, you know. Mm -hmm. They're, they're going to pick on the, the, the fat chubby kid because yeah. he can't do anything. Right. Well, guess what? I had to take a stand. Now, I don't recommend this. This is my disclaimer. I don't mm -hmm. recommend fighting. Right. But when somebody's picking on you, you have the right to defend yourself. Yes. And I defended myself, and I, I I took the proper channels. I told the teacher, right. look, this kid over here in the corner is bothering me. Whatever happens next, I'm not going to be responsible. Okay. So let's just say he went on an ambulance. <laughs> they called my parents. Mm -hmm. And for three months for fighting in school, which is not allowed, again, I don't recommend it. Right. But you do have to take a stand. Yeah. I spent three months in a cold room called ILC, which is intensive learning. Right. And I had to, I sat there and reflect on what I did. And I started thinking about my life when I was a small boy, mm -hmm. again, getting bullied from other kids. Mm -hmm. I remember when I had this kid, this young kid, you know, I think a year older than me, and I was like a year younger. I, my arm was like a vice grip around it. And it was like, why did I do that? But again, I had to take a stand. Right. So those those are the things I regret in my life. Okay. But at that time, I thought those were the right decisions to do. Right. Mm -hmm. And then ever since then, they they didn't pick on me. Okay. Because I, I stood up for myself and said, wait, don't bother that guy. Yeah. And then sometimes after you fight, you become friends. Right. Which is kind of strange. Mm -hmm. So why do we have to fight to get to know each other? Yeah, mm -hmm. No, that's true. It doesn't yeah. make sense. It doesn't. It doesn't make any sense. So, yeah. you know, when I became a parent... She was going to school. They started bullying her. I'm not surprised. Yeah. I'm like, oh, no, this ain't happening. Yeah. So I uh, I made a promise to her when she first came out, and she grabbed my finger for the first time, and mm -hmm. the doctor said that was rare. Mm -hmm. I was like, you got a special kid. And I'm like, yes, I do. And I'm like, 
from this day forward, I'm going to do everything in my power to protect her. Yeah. And when somebody started bothering her, dad went to school, look, this kid's bothering my daughter, make it stop, make it go away, no matter what you do, make it go away. Mm -hmm. So it went, it stopped for a while and had to go back, do the same thing all over again. They tried to blame me mm -hmm. for protecting her. I'm like, no, she's being bothered. She's coming home upset crying. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, this ain't happening. Mm -hmm. So I, I was I was bullied awful. I got kicked down the stairs. Wow. I oh. got burned with a pencil. Um, I got name calling every day. I got sticky notes on my back. Just because you were different. Wow. Just because mm -hmm. I was different, um, cause my size, cause I had health problems that. Mm -hmm. I had to go to the nurse every day, um, that I walked different, mm -hmm. um, then when I got older I had to start using a cane to help me balance and, mm -hmm. um, it just got worse and worse, but I kept saying to myself, you know, stay positive, mm -hmm. I always had my friends around me, um, you always got the big guy to protect you. I always got my dad and mom, and, mm -hmm. No, and that's what even encouraged me to be a teacher more is that I want to make a difference in education. Awesome. Very nice. Yeah. Very I nice. was going to ask her about, about, I was going to ask you about that, about what motivates you. And if, like your dad, you had gotten discouraged along the way and just said, I give up. I did. I did. When I got sicker last year, mm -hmm. I, I kind of got discouraged a little. I was feeling like I can't do my dream. Mm -hmm. I started being depressed in the house. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I... I what got you out of that? My dad... And being so, in his power chair. Being, getting my power chair and like learning how to use it to get around the house. Yeah. And, you know, and then... They're great, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. But wow. this, this book came out of nowhere and... When she took a look at it, the way I describe it, mm -hmm. I, it started with a foundation, mm -hmm. four walls and a roof. She just did the interior. He describes like a house. <laughs> okay. And I, I didn't know along the way that I made one of many of her dreams come true by, by getting this book published with her. You always wanted to be an author too. I wanted there? to write a story. It's just I didn't know when it was going to happen or how. Or yeah. Like, That's I always awesome. had a dream to write a story to share with my future students in the okay. classroom. It's an awesome dream. Question for you, John. What would you say to other parents? Because a lot of times when, when you have a kid with some, some challenges, I'm not going to say disabilities, I don't like that, Maybe with either. some challenges, what would you say? Because sometimes they get all upset. They don't know what to do, how to live, how to deal with, the, with challenges and what's going to come up. What do you say? What are some inspirational thoughts and words just, and just have patience guide your child if you got to help your child walk you you be there every second to make sure that they don't fall you protect them the best way you know how um and just make them laugh but the most important thing is you have to protect them because if you don't protect them something serious is going to happen and you're going to feel bad afterwards but you don't want to protect them enough that so they don't live their dream right Oh no! You, along the way, you know, you find something that works together with both the parent and the kid, and who knows that uh, another family might have another family book come out. Mm -hmm. But just guide them as best you can. Mm -hmm. Now, did you encourage Destiny to try and work things out for herself before you would step in? I would give her advice. You know, when mm -hmm. we're we're big wrestling fans and we love The Rock, mm -hmm. and his favorite saying was just bring it. Yeah. And every time there was a challenge at school or something, I'm like, that's just say, just bring it. Right. And then everything will start to come more clear and mm -hmm. she'd be okay. So you use the rock as your inspiration? <laughs> yes. One of, okay. well, one of many of my inspirations. Okay. Very interesting. I'm a John Cena fan. I like ah. me too. I do never give up. <laughs> well, uh, both of them are very good. How do, we, how do we get a hold of this book of yours that you got out? Um, you can actually visit, uh, if you're in the city of Buffalo, in the mm -hmm. UB area, just stop at the Talking Leaves on Main Street mm -hmm. and go yeah. in and ask for, the, you know, the, the guys working the counter, ask for the book. They'll go get it for you. Um, you can visit our website at thejourneywithdad.com. It has the most easiest, way. I'm studying to be um, a web designer. Right. And I, could, I commend the publisher for making this site so easy. Three tabs, 
find your information, boom, you're done. You don't have to go searching or anything like that. And it's also on Barnes and Noble and Amazon too. Awesome. Yes. You, got awesome. it, you got it on <laughs> all of them, huh? Awesome. Mm-hmm. I oh. like Barnes and Noble. <laughs> Me too. Who did the animation for that? Because that's pretty good um, animation. The, the illustration. The cra- craziest thing is, is um, she drew a storyboard. We both can't draw, but the publisher took our ideas and enhanced them to make them better. It's it's like my favorite part of the book is like the wolves and the purple and lightning bolt, which is my idea. Okay. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. Do we have time to have them tell us a little bit about it? Because I don't think yeah, they I got think really got into it. Yeah, I think we a couple minutes because our, our other half isn't going to take that long. Right. So <laughs> what's the story about? This story is about a father and a daughter. They're getting ready to um, take a uh, trip to the bookstore. Okay. Um, on the way there, um, the dad makes a wrong turn, and they end up in an unfamiliar place, which we call Crazy Town. Okay. And uh, the weather changes, and things start to get mystical and scary. And um, the car starts to act up when the purple lightning comes down, and there's a a little creepy uh, wolf. (laughs) Okay. I thought I thought I was gonna have to battle some wolves like Liam Neeson in the Gray Line. Ah, but, yes, I saw that movie. But the wolves are like a <laughs> metaphor. They're mm-hmm. off in the distance to make just, just enough scariness to it. Okay. And you don't want to give too much away. But no. Yeah. No. Yeah. It sounds like a good book. It really does. Yeah. yeah. And, and this is my favorite picture. Okay. How come? Um, I just like the wolf in the background because my dad says the two lone wolves like represents us. Okay. So I like the wolf being in the background with us with the characters in the car. I think it makes it the real metaphor meaning. Yeah. yeah very good. Very I good. Like that. Very nice. And on the back of the book, I like how they put a picture of us where our biographies. Oh, that is nice. To tell them a little bit about, um, tell the readers about us a that little bit. That is very bit. nice. This, this was a late Christmas present for us because this came out December 27th oh. of 2013. Okay. January 30th, we sent it in A in Buffalo. They did that book as a giveaway. And during during, during some research online, we found out we had like five, five star ratings of this book already. Wow. And wow. and um, the the Lockport News and Wire mm-hmm. gave us a five star rating on it. Awesome. Wow. Um, are the proceeds going anywhere or just for yourself? Did, did, you know. Did you? Do they go to you? They're for um, us. I'm yeah, trying to. The, it should be for you. We're trying, I'm, I'm to, trying to modify, modify our, house. our home. Okay. Um, my bathroom needs to be redone okay. to make it more handicap accessible. Yeah. The ramp needs a little fixing. Um, when but the yeah. winter hit, the ramp kind of spans. Oh yeah. A little bit, and yeah. the woods a little. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Yeah. My sister has a ramp for me. Mm-hmm. I hear you. Good deal. And yeah. My bedroom should, needs to be a little bit larger so I got more room to yeah get around and into bed. And yeah, my my room is the old garage. <laughs> oh, it was our old garage? So I know what you mean. <laughs> I I I, um, I don't usually ask questions like this, but your your the the stick there that you have that very colorful. Oh, Wheelchair control? No, no, no. no the, your cane. The, the oh, cane. my cane. Oh, just a cane. I thought it was this modified thingy. Okay. No, it's my cane. <laughs> See my randomness? Okay. <laughs> so are you yeah. still able to walk a little bit then? If you got your cane or no? Um, it's just to get out of the chair, it's go from the bed, yeah. go to the bathroom, and that's yeah. it. But I'm always right there helping her up, make sure she's Good in the deal. chair. Yeah. Um, I got to go see this specialist, but I don't have time to go see the specialist because if I'm down... I'm worried that my wife's not strong enough to help her to get up yeah. and down. So okay, I, I just, mm-hmm. a bottle of leave, mm-hmm. two pills, eight hours a day, 12 sometimes, <laughs> I'm good to go. Yeah. Now, do you have any aspiration, like any more other dreams, like to move out on your own someday, to, or is it just to go to school right now and just worry about that? Um, my dream right now is to get my master's degree. Um, you know, to, you know, work with kids in the classroom. Um, right now I've been doing different field placements and... you like it? I love it. Yeah. I love 
speak to uh, helping a student one on one. Mm -hmm. um, when I first went back to field placements, I was scared mm -hmm. um, that I wouldn't be able to get around the classroom. Yeah, uh, I was scared that the teacher might be uh, intimidated. Like, yeah. um, how do I help her learn right. to be a teacher? Um, the kids asked me a couple questions at first. Right. I tried to explain as best as possible, mm -hmm. but as I kept coming back, they got to know me and they loved me. And mm -hmm. when I had to leave, they go, "Why are you leaving?" I know. <laughs> I hear you. And they made me a card, Aww. and um, it was very nice. And I'm gonna see if I can go back to that school. I went to West Street Elementary. I'm gonna see if I can go back there. That's awesome. Well, very good, very good. Keep mm -hmm. going and keep doing and keep writing and keep being a stand-up dad. Well, now we'd like to have you participate in something w that we're doing. How, we know that you got, you got a van that you recently purchased, mm -hmm. but before that, what, what, was, what is it like to get around as a person with a disability? Is transportation easy? No, it is not easy at all. Like what was you, some of your guys' experiences do you, could you could you go wherever you wanted to go and what you know how did you deal with that well i before we got the van i had an old car a pt cruiser and before we got the ramp we had four steps for her to walk down four steps and to go back into the chair was so painful mm -hmm. and then i had to help her in the car fold it up put the chair in the car and and we just go we i tried so many modifications to this car it just will not work and be safe. But thank God, school had a roll metro bus with a ramp on it. It was worth the eight dollars round trip. Yeah, I was taking the yeah. bus yeah. for a while. Right. Paratransit. Paratransit. No. It wasn't paratransit. No, it was, it was something, it was something similar. Metro. It was something, something similar. similar. Like roll metro, where they 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 even made exceptions to come in into our park and pick up us at the mail center, take us to school and bring us home. And I'm like, I was so grateful and thankful for. For, for that company, it, it was mm -hmm. worth the money. So I wouldn't have to keep hurting myself and then, so. Cause I couldn't use my power van. chair at school. Oh. And I can't, it's hard to keep pushing yourself. I know, yeah. I started, you know, even though before my, I, I think I, I got like a starter carpal tunnel and yeah. my hands were cramp. Uh, my hands get numb every day yeah. and keep pushing yourself mm -hmm. and there's like little slopes in the hallway mm -hmm. and yeah. I couldn't get to the cafeteria by myself mm -hmm. yeah trying to push yourself into the bathroom, bathroom. doorway yep. and push yeah, it open that, that at the same work. time into the stalls I know <laughs> so, I used to have a manual chair so accessibility and especially accessibility with transportation would be a lot nicer if we had more options out there, right? Yes. Exactly. And it, if it was better publicly, even being able to take the bus if you need to the right, right. way, right? Yeah, like, like better better hours for bus service, um, easier scheduling and access. I agree. Especially where we live, there's mm -hmm. a bus stop in front of in front of the, where we live and a bus stop, bus stop across the street. Mm -hmm. There's no light. Yeah, oh. there's no light. There's no light. And That's not good. When when I went to our, to our first homeowners meeting, mm -hmm. they said somebody died from crossing the street because there was no light. Okay, and they still haven't done anything about it. And there's still no light there. Because okay. Transit Road is so busy. Mm -hmm. I know. Yeah, I mean, the, the, we, we really need to work in our community about getting things more accessible, better transportation. Mm -hmm. Now, for people, not just for people with disabilities, but for all people that may not own a car or um, have access to that or uh, use other kinds of transportation. The elderly have a lot of the same issues, mm -hmm. um, you know, um, almost the exact same issues. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing, I want to tell you public people out there, <laughs> we, we have a survey that we've developed and we, we want people that use any alternative way of transportation to take the survey. We want numbers so that we can tell our legislators and our community that you know transportation matters. Not just tell them, but show them in numbers why we need funding, why we need alternatives, why we need the community to work together. So I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read 
with my bad eyes um, <laughs> how you would do the survey and you uh, even give you a phone number to call so that if you need the help we can give it to you it's www.surveymonkey.com slash s like sam slash l like larry v like victor l like larry z like xylophone um five l like larry l like larry and if you go to that website you can take the survey for free it's a survey monkey survey but if you need help we can actually help you take the survey as well by calling 1-800-942-4070 that's 1-800-942-4070 Monday through Friday 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. and we, we can help you do that so uh, we and uh, yes thank you this it can be done by mail as well if you need it sent to you you would send it to D Donny that's D D A W N Y Transportation 7 Community Drive Chicktawaga New York 14225 and we encourage everybody to take the service so we can get the numbers we have a few more minutes anything else that you guys would want to talk about because I think you guys are a, a, the poster people of <laughs> of how parent and child should work together as people with disabilities get the get the message out there anything any clothing uh, clothing clothing <laughs> I can't talk today let me do that any closing yes thank you. that you would like to say we have about two minutes Okay, so. um, the only thing I would like to say is thank you for allowing us to share our story and share yes. our book on the show. Um, you know, having my mom and dad always there by my side is like a relief. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, I know a lot of kids don't have good relationship with their parents, but you need to talk with them. They're, mm -hmm. you know, their communication is key. Yeah. yeah, like my inspiration is my dad and my mom and you know um it's good to have my best friend my sister is like my sister she's not my sister but she you know she yeah. is to me mm -hmm. um she's she <laughs> she's always right there she's we've been friends since fourth grade and she's been through everything with me um you know you know family time yeah it's so precious mm -hmm. And no matter what situation, you need to get, you know, your family, no mm -hmm. matter what. Mm -hmm. And as a role yeah. of a dad, you got you to gotta be willing to talk about anything. Because mm -hmm. if you don't know something, you can't find a solution. And me, I'm, I'm, I'm a fix-it guy. You right. know, building computers, there's a problem, I find a solution. Being a parent, you, you talk and you find out what's going on, mm -hmm. then you find a way to fix it. Or mm -hmm. go, go another avenue to um to find it but also encourage your children okay don't my, my my stepdad was was tough but when he passed away i understood what he meant because every day i worked harder than the next guy to, to get where i am mm -hmm. and i think by doing that i've i've impressed him and earned his respect before he passed away um okay but to, to be honest with you there's no manual for being a parent you just have to wing it and use your best judgment. Um, thank God I had my grandmother as one of the biggest inspirations of my life because my grandmother had a stiff leg and my daughter reminds me a lot of my grandmother. Okay. We need to wrap it up. So thank you very much for joining us. And I would like to thank the view, Mike, for joining us before well, I thank the viewers, well, of course. Well, thank you, dear. And now uh, I would like to thank you, the viewers, for joining us. This is Self Advocacy in Action. We'll see you next time. This is Eric Passant speaking for Self Advocacy in Action, a Santa's Western pr production. Fuck,
Fuck, fuck, fuck.